In this video, we're gonna utilize Photoshop and Chief Architect to create a custom shower surround with custom laid tile. Now you can see here in Chief Architect, I've got three material IDs left, back, and right. And then in Photoshop, I'm going to take a tile pattern that I've created. Now this is a seamless texture. I've got three textures here. I've got a roughness map, a bump map, and then my diffuse map. And if you just hit Control All, Control A, excuse me, to select everything here, I can then get into my edit menu and get down to define pattern. Now I've already done this. This is already added to my pattern library within Photoshop. The next thing I need to do is create a Photoshop document where I have some slices built in so that I am exporting three different materials for a shower surround. I'll show you how to do this. I'm gonna hit Control N on my keyboard, and of course you can always see my quick keys down at the bottom here on the keyboard and mouse. If you slow down the video or pause, you can see exactly what buttons I'm hitting, so I'm only gonna mention them a few times. So I created a custom document here, and you can set the resolution to anything up to 72 pixels per inch or PPI. Anything over that is gonna be a really large document. And then I changed from pixels to inches and then set my width based on a 32 inch side shower backsplash, if you will, and a 60 inch back. It's kind of a narrow depth shower. And then I've got an 80 inch height. All I need to do is create this document then, Next thing is in my view, I'm gonna hit new guide, type in that 32 inch leg, and then one more time, new guide, and it's gonna be that 32 plus the 60 inch back. And we've got our next section here. From here, I've got the slice tool enabled. Simply need to just get close to my guide, drag it down, get close to the other guide, and it's gonna create three slices. You can see here, if I zoom in, slice number three, slice number two, and then slice number one. Back in my template document, I've got several folders set up, diffuse, bump, and roughness. All I did here was add a pattern file. From there, pattern comes up, I can drop it down and select the patterns that I created from that other document. You can set the scale here as well. And of course, you can always double click into that pattern and make any edits that you need to. So here's my second pattern. It'll go into that bump folder. This first item is roughness. We're gonna see in here, if I get in really close, we've got a couple of different extra layers here. Those layers represent, one, an outside metal edge, which I can set the color of dynamically. If I just double click on this, I can change it to red, as you can see. I'm gonna hit cancel. And then I've got a grout line, same thing. It's a solid color. I can, of course, make this any color I need to. I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel again. So that represents my grout line and my metal edge in the roughness map. So I'm gonna make this metal material somewhat shiny by making it a dark gray. So from here, Control Alt, Shift S. Control Alt, Shift S. It's gonna get me this legacy dialog for save for web. I did not limit my image size, so I've got a really high resolution image. Let me go ahead and set this to 20%. And then I wanna make sure that the preset that I'm using is JPEG. And if I Alt and scroll wheel out, I want to marquee select this so that I'm making sure everything is selected, which means everything will export underneath this profile. Let me hit save. I'm gonna locate where I need to save this at, and then I'm gonna Choose one of the existing names here. I'm gonna use this diffuse white. Press save, it's going to dump this into that images folder. I'll enable my bump map, here's that bump. Same thing, control alt shift S. I also wanna limit this down to 20%. You won't have to do this if you followed a PPI of something like 15 or so when you first created your document. Again, scrolling out, making sure that I have the full document selected, hitting save, and then I can pick that bump name. Now it won't overwrite this material. What it's gonna do is, because we've got a split document, it's gonna save it into images here. So I'm not worried about my base material. I can still use that base material on other parts or other walls. Say I've got a pony wall or something like that in the shower. Last thing is I'm gonna go ahead and 
select this pattern, control J to duplicate it, bring it up into the diffuse stack, double click it, and then click this drop down and select my diffuse pattern. It already retains that 300% and I'm gonna turn on this grouping. You can see here, there's my grouping. I'm gonna do one extra thing. I'm gonna control J to duplicate that bump pattern. I'm gonna bring it at the front of this stack and then I'm actually going to rasterize this layer by right clicking rasterize layer. Now I've got a black and white image from here. I actually wanna paint a couple things into this image. I'm gonna use the paint bucket tool. I'm only doing this to illustrate the power of this particular workflow. So I'm gonna put paint within a couple of sections of tile here. Just for the purpose of showing what this looks like in the final product. Maybe I'll even drop this color down just a little bit and I'll even paint the little highlights underneath. The purpose of this is to show you that you can in fact make some very complex documents, especially if I put maybe a layer mask on the top here. We'll just show you what that looks like real quick in, in just a second. I'm gonna double click this bump map and then I'm gonna use the bend, blend if tool to limit this just to the pink section only, and then we'll reveal the section below. There we go, just like that. And I might do a little bit of blending there. There we go. From here, I can make these two a group if I want to, and then Control J to copy that group, and then I can actually merge this group and make it one image file. From here, I can export just like the same way that I exported those other options. I can, of course, duplicate this again. Or in fact, I'll drop this out. I'm gonna change this pattern file here. I'm gonna bring this grouping on top of the other grouping and then I'm gonna change, I'm gonna make this part disappear and I'm gonna change this pattern file. And we're gonna change it to that bump map or maybe even this map right here. Just to give you an example of what we can do with this. Now I'm gonna utilize my mask. So I'm gonna make a selection here and make the lower section blank out from a layer mask just by paint bucket tool and then painting in black into this. Now you can see here, we've got two different sections of tile. This is a great way for us to essentially make some very complex tile patterns on our shower. I'm not going to actually export it with this look. This is a little funny, but just illustrating that we can do some very comp complicated things within Photoshop for our tile. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this group and de deselect everything and control alt shift S to export. Same thing, limit this to 20%. Now I could change this and leave this at 91%, which would make it a large image file, and it would still line up with my other image files being utilized for bump, metal, etc. So if you wanted some more detail in just your color map, or maybe you wanted a lot more detail in just your metal map, which can be complicated at times, then you could leave the resolution up on just one of these images, sets of images, I should say. Let me save this. This is going to be our diffuse. Oh, and we have to replace it because I made a mistake earlier. And this is simple enough to fix. All we need to do here is this bottom section here, which was the roughness. I can hit Control, excuse me, Alt, and it will only display the section. And then export this. Needed to rename this roughness. Let's actually look, take a look at our folder here. What images we have. We have bump and white. We don't actually have our roughness yet. Now we can switch back over to Chief Architect and the last part of this is pretty easy. All we need to do is set our material definitions. In the texture file, let's locate this. It's very easy. Here's our left side. I need to enable stretch to fit. That's really important. And then our bump map. And of course our roughness. And finally, our metal map. 
That's just one side. We're going to have to do this again for that back section. So we're in this panel. Let's go ahead and do that roughness map. Metal map. Diffuse and bump and then stretch to fit. And our last section. Now this particular tile, I might switch my metal map and actually put it into the roughness channel. Could be interesting, we'll see. And make sure stretch to fit. Now we can see here, we've got a perfect offset here, what looks like a grout line. We could have changed the color of the grout line to match the color of this grout. But it's actually just a perfect layout there. Take a look at this in PBR. Now that we have this shower surround, we can actually save the shower surround. We can group it into an architectural block. We can save our pattern files. We can also save our Photoshop template file for shower surrounds. And it would be very, very quick. Oh, and save our materials here. It'd be very quick to just duplicate the material using our component base, right? Or just replacing the material and making a whole new surround really quickly. All we need to do is get back on that Photoshop, change our pattern files around, re-export. Now that it's all built, this can all be done within five minutes and you can have a very custom tile pattern on your backsplash. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, please subscribe. Please drop in some comments. Happy to hear them. If you want some more information, you can always reach me through YouTube, through our website, rabbitdesign.net. Or you can also get to us through our Facebook channels or Chief Talk.